but less than a second on the PS5. So hopefully we get some specs of the SSD soon, but the fact that it's all there... Look, rumors and speculation are great, right? But what about cold, hard facts? That's what we're going to go over today when it comes to the PS5. Facts, things that we can actually confirm. What is up, everybody? Chaos here. Welcome to the video. Drop a like if you guys are going to be getting the PS5. And don't worry, once it comes out, we'll be switching over the monthly giveaway to a PlayStation 5. But for now, it is still a PlayStation 4. And if you want to win it, all you have to do is be subscribed, drop a like, make sure you have your notifications on, leave a comment why you want it and what game you want to launch with the PS5 and put your Twitter handle. I will pick a winner at the end of the month and I'll ship it to you. Now, let's go over some things we know, some cold hard facts, some confirmed intel about the PS5. First but not last, it's possibly not called the PS5. Now, there are tons of rumors surrounding this thing and uh, you have to dig deep. You have to dig really deep for certain things. But, I mean, it doesn't have that name. Now, Sony numbers their systems. We know that. It is worth mentioning that Sony has not referred to the new system as the PS5. That's all of us. They have just called it their next-gen console or their new system. Not even the PS5 developers have called it the PS5 in interviews. That's a little odd, isn't it? Now, it's very possible that Sony just doesn't want to drop the name on the world before the console is closer to being ready. And it's also possible that this new console won't be called the PS5 and instead it will have a subtitle like the PlayStation Ultra or the PlayStation Super. Now, personally, I think it will be called the PS5, but it is worth mentioning that Sony has been very, very careful not to actually call it that, which makes you wonder. Here's a cold hard fact for you. Final Fantasy VII is confirmed. Now with all the rumors what games are coming and aren't coming, it's actually cool to get some confirmation on at least one. According to Square Enix, the Final Fantasy VII Remake is being developed for both current gen consoles and next gen. Now they didn't actually say the name of the next gen system, but they did specifically state that they were working on it. So that is big news in its own right. Now you probably know, the Final Fantasy VII Remake is going to be released in bits. <laughs> bits or chunks. First one coming out in March of 2020. So here's my theory. Hear me out. I think Final Fantasy VII will be released in two to three chunks throughout the year. But then once the whole thing is out, there will be this big box collection that contains the entire game. And that version will be on the PS5 as a launch title. What do you think? Here's another one for you. It is backwards compatible with the PlayStation 4. And this is good news for everybody. One of the worst things about the 8th console generation is that it seemed to walk right away from backwards compatibility at the very beginning. Xbox later went back on that and added extensive support for older games, but Sony never really corrected their mistake, and it seems they will do that with the PS4. According to Sony, the PlayStation 5 will be totally backwards compatible with the PS4, which will not only make the launch library huge when the console drops, but it will also make transitioning from the old system to the new one easy. Plus. It will also give Xbox One owners a better reason to buy a PS5 since they can play all the PlayStation 4 games they missed out on, right? Backwards compatibility is a feature that every new console should have no matter what. No excuses. I don't know why recent gaming has been so unkind to backwards compatibility, but I really hope that we're past those days. People are always going to want to replay older games, and there will always be people who never get to play the older games in the first place, so you should make that their option. It should also be noted. The support for the PS1, 2, and 3 is not confirmed, but we know for a fact, at least, that the PS5 will fully support PlayStation 4. And speaking of that, many PlayStation 4 games will get a performance boost. Now, this is something that Microsoft started doing with the Xbox One X, so it makes a little bit of sense that Sony would actually follow. With the PS4 library being backwards compatible, Sony has alluded that many PlayStation 4 games will get a nice little boost while being played on the PS5, be it in visuals or in performance or both. Microsoft has been doing this for a while. They added improved visuals and performance to 360 games when played on the Xbox One X and it's been very well received and it looks like Sony is going to copy that. Now they haven't specified just what performances will be uh, present, but we do know for a fact that loading screens will be drastically decreased as shown off by the tech test not too long ago where the PS5 loaded Spider-Man in less than a second. So it's looking like the PlayStation 5 will not only be a good place to play next-gen games, but it will also become the best place to play PlayStation 4 games, which will surely be a big selling point for those who didn't get in on the PS4 generation. Okay, let's talk GPU and CPU specs here, alright? We don't have exact numbers or data just yet. 
but we do have a rough outline of the tech that the PlayStation 5 will be working with. According to Sony, the PS5 CPU will be a custom chip based off the third generation AMD Ryzen line. And it will also feature eight cores, although that's kind of irrelevant since the core speed is unknown at the moment. As for graphics, the GPU will also be a custom chip based on the AMD's Radeon Navi line. Sony has already confirmed. The new system will support 3D audio and up to 8K resolution, although I'm kind of skeptical of that since 8K is still years away from being even remotely mainstream, but whatever. The PS5 will also support real-time ray tracing, a first for home consoles, and overall, it's going to be a big step from the current console generation. Now, it needs to be noted that we shouldn't be too stoked about the PS5's graphics just yet because Sony hasn't really said much about the frame rate, and they also haven't given us specific benchmarks or hardware equivalents. So, those of you saying the PS5 is going to be super strong or stronger than gaming PCs, you should probably hold off on that before you embarrass yourself. But at the end of the day, it will be a big step over the PS4, and that's what ultimately matters for a new console. The earliest it's coming is mid-2020, I'm sorry. <laughs> now, the release date of the console has been here and there. Originally in 2019, Sony stated it was three years away, which would put the launch window at 2022. But in recent months, it seems Sony has been streamlining the console's production because they've been teasing a lot of it, and as icing on the cake, they stated in late April, the console was a year away, which would put the release window mid-2020. Now, it's very possible that after Microsoft put so much money into their new consoles and word came out they were launching next year, Sony realized they needed to push their system forward to compete. Or maybe the original 2022 date was just thrown out to divert people from the truth. The point is, Sony has stated the system isn't coming before mid-2020, and I doubt they're going to launch a system then. Personally, I think the PS5 will be hitting shelves for the holiday season in 2020. Full cloud gaming is not confirmed. And you say, well, Jimmy, this is a list of confirms. Well, yeah, not being confirmed is some confirmation. Well, not really. Okay, Microsoft is going hard into cloud gaming. It's worth mentioning that Sony has not confirmed that their new system will support it yet. We know that the PS5 is going to be uh, making use of a disk drive. So obviously, Sony isn't walking away from the traditional physical media just yet. And we also know that aspects of cloud gaming will be present in the new PS5. But with the Xbox going so hard next generation with game streaming and all that stuff, it's definitely interesting that Sony hasn't said much about it. It's very likely that they'll still have something regarding cloud gaming or maybe an expansion of their PS Now service. I don't know, but as for the official statement about the extent of the PS5's cloud gaming potential, Sony has remained tight-lipped. Definitely a stark contrast from Microsoft, who has an entire dedicated cloud gaming Xbox coming very, very soon. Next up, it works with the PSVR. Now, Sony has put quite a bit of money into virtual reality through their PSVR headsets and games. Within the PS5, fans were a little concerned that support for the current tech would stop and Sony would release this new headset that they'd have to go pony up dough to buy. But you can put those fears to rest because it's confirmed that the PlayStation 5 will support the current PSVR tech. Thanks to the full backwards compatibility with the PS4, as well as the support from the PSVR headset and the PlayStation Move controllers, you heard me right, the PS5, will be an easy transition for those looking to continue playing games in VR. Now, it's unknown if Sony has plans to release an updated VR headset for the PS5. They probably will, but we know for a fact that the current VR tech will work. Here's one for you. It will use an SSD. It's about time, right? One of the most common complaints with many big console games is loading times. Many open world games feature long loading times that totally pull you out of the experience, and while some of that is due to poor optimization, a lot of it's due to the fact that consoles have historically been using hard drives that prioritize space as opposed to speed. PC gamers? Well, they've had access to SSDs for years, and if you don't know what an SSD is, it stands for Solid State Drive, and it's a new form of storage that reads content way faster and drastically decreases your load times, and it seems that both Microsoft and Sony are jumping on that. The PS5 will feature an internal SSD, and while the size and exact speed are unknown, we do know that Sony did a tech demo of Spider-Man running on the PS5 in which the loading screen was around 8 seconds on the PS4, but less than a second on the PS5. So hopefully we get some specs of the SSD soon, but the fact that it's all there, that's a good step for console gaming as a whole. And at number one today, it will support cross-gen. Now many people read cross-gen as a throwaway line, but let's, let's think about this for a second. Sony has said on multiple occasions they are committed to cross-gen gaming with their new system. So what, is that, what does that mean exactly? Well, with support for backwards compatibility as well as the new games continuing to release on the PS4 despite the PS5 coming, I think it's worth looking at what Sony means by cross-gen. It definitely implies that the PS4 will continue getting games and support after the launch of the PS5, which is a good thing. 
but one concern raised by that is whether or not it will hold back game development if the developers have to make their games playable on both systems. We've seen games fail because of that. Hopefully, Sony will clarify exactly what they mean by cross-gen, but looking at the various interviews and press statements regarding the PS5, they're putting quite a few eggs in that basket, so it's worth keeping an eye on as the PS5's launch gets closer. Now, I'm going to ask you a question. What should the price tag be of this? I know we don't have all the specs and everything we need yet, but I want to know, what are you willing to pay out of your hard-earned money once this thing actually drops. On the screen now is another video. I need you to click on that video right now and we will continue the conversation over on that video in the comment section. I'll see you guys soon.